Last month was masturbation month, but I was busy, so I have to make up for lost time. I don't mean... I was bedridden. I had plenty of time for that. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm a certified spicy therapist here on the internet, and I make videos to educate about spicy topics. And today, we are going to review some history on masturbation. We are going to review and eat some temperance foods that are supposed to keep you from masturbating. And most importantly, babes, we're going to talk about the health benefits of masturbating, of which there are many. And since this is a food review, we're going to start off with a cocktail. Boop boop! Y'all remember Hannah? I hope Hannah's doing great. We're going to start the day with an Anita Bryant. Jared, isn't it a little early for a cocktail? Yes, I'm going to die. So Anita Bryant was this hateful actress from the 70s and 60s. She was very anti-rainbow. She had this whole Save the Children campaign. She got a pie thrown in her face. It's hilarious. Look it up. She was also the face of a big orange juice campaign. So in retaliation to her homophobia, gay bars started replacing the orange juice in their screwdrivers with apple juice. And that, children, is where the Anita Bryant... That children was in jest, by the way. My content is very much for adults only. So if you are younger than 18, fuck out of here. So I'm going to rate all these foods on three ways. The texture for the things that have texture. This will not. Uh, the taste. And then how likely it is to keep me from masturbating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. So taste... Six. I'd prefer a screwdriver. Um, the citrus in a screwdriver is definitely nicer than apple juice. But this isn't unpleasant. It would be a nice, like, patio drink. This one isn't truly a temperance food, so it wouldn't stop me from masturbating. In fact, a couple of those deep, I might have, uh, I might be more likely to. All right, let's move on. So next, let's talk about Sylvester Graham and his Graham Crackers and his followers, the Grahamites, which, if you think about it, are also Graham Crackers. By the way, I can't have gluten, so these are gluten-free Graham Crackers, which means, yes, they will taste like sawdust. But I think that's just going to get us closer to the original experience. So Graham had some big opinions about moral appetites and discussed how everything was too indulgent and it was killing people. But he took this to a pretty extreme place because he thought things like black pepper were indulgent. Uh, and he extended things not just to a physical diet, but to a sexual diet. He believed that eating bland foods would help people balance their moral diets and sexual appetites. And the original graham crackers were not sweet. So every time you have a s'more, this man is rolling in his grave. Maybe next year we'll make s'mores. If you feel so inclined, Graham's entire book, Lectures on the Science of Human Life, is Googleable. There's an entire PDF document that has the entire thing. All right, let's rate this. So texture's like a 2 out of 10. Taste is closer to a 4, but remember, this is probably sweeter than Graham's initial crackers would have been. Stop me from masturbating? Honestly... 7 out of 10. Like, these are pretty unpleasant. If I was, like, having some me time and you're like, oh, I would have stopped. I'm hoping I can use these to make, like, a pie crust or something that will be better. Next up on our review of anti-jerking off losers is John Harvey Kellogg. So we're going to make some cornflakes because I couldn't find any cornflakes. So now we are making fresh homemade natural cornflakes. I bet you didn't know this was a trad wife channel. Here, us and our littles, the cats are moving away from a corporate supply chain and trying to get closer to nature. Greased foil lined baking dish. One and a half cups gluten-free cornmeal. One tablespoon of sweetener of your choice. I used a uh, monk fruit sweetener and then a half of a teaspoon of salt. Vanilla. I want to be so clear, sugar and vanilla were probably not in the original cornflakes. I mixed everything together, now I'm going to add water until it has like a sandy breadcrumb consistency. Yes, I'm mixing with my hands, they're washed, and I'm the only person eating this. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. So I followed two different recipes, one that said to make individual flakes, and one that said to make a thin layer and then break it into flakes yourself. Doesn't look promising! Anyway, let's throw it in the oven for 15 minutes at 350. The original cornflakes were not made in an oven. They were made by accident by leaving a corn batter out overnight. Anyway, while those are in the oven, let's talk about lifelong hater of sex, John Harvey Kellogg. Before we get to anything, this man did not even invent cornflakes. He stole the recipe from his brother, period. Now, John 
was a huge admirer of Graham, and followed all of his work, believed in the moral diet, etc., and would have people stay at a residential wellness clinic. Uh, so think of like the fancy high-end boutique clinics that go, that people go to today, and a similar amount of science went into them. So you would go to John's clinics and not eat until you felt moral. In case it hasn't been obvious, uh, with both Graham and Kellogg, moral is defined by, like, their views of their Christianity and how they interpreted uh, Christian morals. So Kellogg went a little bit harder than Sylvester did when it came to being anti-sex and anti-masturbation, right? Because this man did not even have sex on his wedding night. This man was against sex. And he even talked about writing anti-sex books on his wedding night instead of having sex with his wife. His wife was probably masturbating, which, again, healthy thing to do. I keep eating this graham cracker even though it's bad. By the way, Sylvester Graham also thought the best food for the human body was just plain bread and water, so we can also review that really quick while we're waiting for our cornflakes. Got our gluten-free bread, we have our water. I mean, it's bread. It's probably the best thing I've had so far. Texture's a seven. This is a pretty good bread. Um, stop me from masturbating. Hmm, a two. Taste is also a seven. Mm -hmm. Can y'all believe there was a whole man selling wellness products that were just, hey, if you eat bread and water, you'll stop masturbating. But then is it really different than any of the retention bros that are out there today? No, it's not. Anyway, cornflakes are almost done. All right, here are cornflakes. I'm gonna break these up and put them in a bowl and review them, just like John Harvey Kellogg would have wanted. <laughs> here we go. I can tell already this is going to be an experience. So the texture is good, but not for a cornflake. They're a little chewy. It's almost like a really dense cornbread. I followed the recipe, but I do think I did this wrong. Maybe they just needed to be left out overnight to dry. The taste is probably its weakest point. It is like a one. <laughs> it just tastes so unfulfilling. Would this stop me from masturbating? A hundred percent. My brain right now as I'm eating this is like, what is this? <laughs> also lots of them so you could projectile them like pocket sand. I am retiring from the trad wife community immediately. So there's one last thing I want to say about history and then we'll talk about why masturbation is healthy and what the benefits are. As Dr. David Lay points out in his book Ethical Porn for Dicks, controlling masturbation has long been a part of like hardline fascist movements as a way to help brainwash people into those movements. So anytime a movement controls your body, I think it is well worth looking into and understanding why that is. In addition to Ethical Porn for Dicks, I think Uncultured by Daniela Mestrinik Young would also be a good book to kind of explore that idea. That book is Uncultured, and Cultish by Amanda Montel would also be a good place to explore that. We talked about people who don't want you to masturbate. Let's talk about why you should. And the first question I always get as a spicy therapist is how much is too much for me and my partner? And there isn't an upper limit to the amount you can. We just look at, is it impacting your life, your relationship, or is it born out of, hey, I'm anxious and I don't have other coping skills. Those are things we address. But other than those, go wild. I will say on the partner thing, partners should not police masturbation. Policing your partner's masturbation is stripping bodily autonomy away from your partner, and that's pretty uncool. Now notice I said policing there, meaning forcing, because if this is part of your agreement or if there's some sort of chastity play, that's like a-okay, as long as everyone's consenting. As a spicy therapist, I often suggest to people that they make time for masturbation, similar to the way they would make time for uh, spicy time with one of their partners. It can be a radical act of self-love and it does not have to end in the big O. Good things about masturbation, it improves your mind-body connection and makes you a better communicator. About what you want, it improves your sleep, it can help strengthen your pelvic floor, it can help you last longer. Spicy self-time is good for stress relief. It also allows you to do check-ins on your body where you might find things to bring to a medical doctor's attention you wouldn't otherwise find. This happens a lot with testicular cancer. It helps relieve sexual tension. 
It's also really good for expanding the buffet. If you have a long distance partner or you're trying to have safer sex, mutual masturbation is really, really good for that. Brings us to number nine, masturbation is the safest sex you can have. Lastly, just to reiterate, retention is bullshit. You don't keep extra testosterone, your body aromatizes it to estrogen. Which is good, because you would be dead if your body didn't have a way to get rid of excess hormones. And all these retention bros talk about the health benefits of retaining semen, but you never see them sucking dick, so they can't be that interested in the health benefits. I'm just saying. All right, I hope this was educational. Happy masturbating. Don't die.